Hi everybody, my name is Olivia Santos. I'm a Bio 212 student with Dr. Field. Um, I chose to do EMS with a human anatomy and physiology because there's a lot of human anatomy and physiology anyway that goes into the EMS field. So these two correlate with each other very strongly. A recent case study focused on the different aspects of a working career in the emergency medical services or EMS as we all know it. Um, this study was conducted in July of 2020, and this is what sparked my interest to explore EMS more, and it'll give me an outlook of what it's going to be like as an EMT or firefighter. Um, where the former study focused on psychological effects of a career as a paramedic or EMT, the goal of this honors project is to research and focus more on prolonged effects of mental stress causing physiological imbalances of a career working full-time in EMS. Uh, my case study will consist of conducting research that focuses on the EMS working career and the physiological effects of continued exposure to stressful job environments. Alongside conducting research, I will also complete a personal interview with an EMS professional who has been active in the field for 20 years. His personal experiences and professional opinions will be included in the study, along with what may be done to improve health services. This information may help decrease potential effects of post-traumatic stress disorder and prevent post-traumatic stress symptoms from developing in future EMS professionals. By investigating the effects of a working career in the EMS field, information can be collected to discuss PTSD and PTSS and other mental health disorders that affect the human brain and daily life functions. If research studies like this continue, then there may be improvement in early identification of EMS workers who experience traumatic events during their working career. Um, a case study from Science Direct will also be used to elaborate on brain abnormalities caused by PTSD and PTSS. This will be in relation to the functions of specific parts of the brain that are most affected from PTSD and PTSS. An interview was conducted between an EMS professional and myself, whom I've known and grown close to in my professional studies. Twelve questions were asked and based on his professional background as an EMS professional. And to the right, you'll see a picture of my interviewee, who is Mr. John J.T. Tyler. He's a firefighter EMT. Um, he's also a fire chief at one of his departments and an EMS captain at another department. The answers to the questions asked in the interview will be evaluated and summarized to better understand the physiological effects of stressors on EMS professionals and how these may lead to symptoms of PTSD. These disorders will also be related to the human functions of the, of the brain, along with other aspects of the autonomic and central nervous system, such as the spinal cord. The interview was divided into four categories of questions, service, education, health, and improving health of the EMS provider. My interviewee is Mr. John J.T. Tyler. He's a Maryland Fire and Rescue Institute instructor, and he's even taught my EMT class, and my he is now teaching my Firefighter 1 class. Um, the initial con interview was conducted on November 23rd and lasted about 16 minutes long, and the follow-up interview was conducted on November 26th and lasted about 20 minutes long. In the following interview questions, the answers are italicized, and verbal consent was given to record the interview, and written consent was given to use his name during this study. Mr. Tyler has been in the field for 25 years firefighting, and 21 of those years has been in EMS. Um, he's a fourth-generation firefighter EMT, so he's always grown up around firefighters and EMTs in his family, and all except his father were volunteers. His father was the only career firefighter EMT in his family. Um... Lots of EMS training and annual educational classes have helped him provide care, and several mental health classes have helped him provide care for himself. More bloodborne and airborne pathogen classes with increasing cases of COVID-19 are occurring. Um, mental health classes associated with recognition of signs and symptoms and how to care for yourself have also taken place over the years. Um, he's participated and trained the trainer classes and programs, which help himself as a teacher train other teachers and providers to care for themselves in times of need. The most challenging aspect of this job is having inexperienced supervisors and the several funding issues. Volunteer bosses have no understanding of the field and are not really EMS savvy enough to understand the job completely, and he has found that the job has become more politically based. Um, funding issues can range from having money for new equipment to buying new apparatuses to pr provide more availability for, to respond to different calls. Um, the most rewarding aspect of the job is having positive patient outcomes. Um, newborns are coming into the world every single day, and being a part of the birthing process on the ambulance for many patients can be very beneficial. Having a direct impact on patients' recovery, especially in sick older patients, can also be very enlightening. Um, receiving sincere thank yous from patients prior to providing care lets you know that you know you did a really good job.
um, crit critical incident stress management classes or CISM formal debriefing classes have helped him prepare for the stress involved in emergency care services. Um, these classes help others to recognize stressors and assisting them in the right direction. Um, these were the best classes he has taken in his career. And more recently, formal opiate addiction classes have been helpful in the field um, before he was very prejudiced toward overdoses because he had no understanding of the circumstances overdose came with. Um, he then realized how medications prescribed with simple surgeries can harm people, and this understanding gave him compassion that was lacked from earlier years. Um, he has been recovering from a back surgery, which was directly related to work on the job. Um, he stated this is usually the number one injury for career-ending injuries. Um, so his back surgery was caused from unsafe lifting way before power stretchers, and over time the pain just accumulated into having a ending up in a back surgery. I mean, many difficulties faced over the years with the unsafe lifting and the awkward positioning to move patients has caused this. Um, if he were to have a negative recovery from the surgery, his next plan was to have a medical retirement to prevent injuring a partner in the future because he cannot work to his full ability. Um, the major stressor working in the EMS field today, he says, is a 50-50 split between funding and fixing mental health problems. Um, paid staff are forced to handle every call on that shift, sometimes back-to-back, -back because volunteers in the field are slowly disappearing. Um, this question regarded his mental health and how severe it has been from a scale of 1 to 10, and he directly stated that you will see things in this career that will just about destroy you. For me, on a scale of 1 to 10, how has this affected me? 25. So his mental health is way better than it was in the past, and he continues to share his story with other providers and future providers like myself. His major effector is children, partly because of having his own daughter at home. He currently feels better about returning to his job every day compared to how it was in the past. The catalyst for him hitting his low point was two similar cases involving children who both died the same way. Um, he's recently been a great advocate for the Code Green campaign, which helps to bring awareness of mental health issues in first responders, and their goal is to reduce those issues. Um, he believes more improvement needs to be made in having more open-door policies and support groups in order to provide for the better health for EMS providers. Uh, more meeting groups should be put together with a team of mental health professionals and doctors where people can openly express their feelings or concerns about their current state of well-being without feeling shame or guilt. Um, EMS providers can become more aware to not let their stress and health issues prevent them from, from performing care on patients by just having formal training. Um, he recently had fought for his employees to have doubled the amount of paid training time to find different classes to help them provide the best care possible. And currently, there are minimum requirements for recertification when it should be well above, which is why he fought so hard for it. Um, there are sp some specific stress relievers that help people overcome difficulties faced after a call. During shift, there's a lot of debriefing time available if needed for the provider. Um, after difficult calls, providers will get together and make sure everyone is okay. And Mr. Tyler has actually provided a policy for his department to allow those to go home after difficult calls if they need to. Um, if that provider does not want to go home and wants to continue working, then they can get put in a second ambulance to allow debriefing time instead of jumping right back into a call. Um, some people live and breathe EMS and firefighting, so it is always good to have different avenues outside of the service to relieve the mind. Different avenues people have taken range from farming to going to the gym every day, but you just have to find what works best for you. So support was found for my prediction as stated in the beginning of this um, study. Um, based on the questions and answers obtained in the interview, we can better understand the different stressors and relief solutions in EMS. One of the most significant health issues stated from the interview was a back surgery from which Mr. Tyler was recovering from. This back injury was caused by unsafe lifting on the job, and it damaged his lumbar and sacral vertebrae of his lower back, which are contained in the lower segments of the spinal cord. More specifically, damage occurred over time to his L4, L5, and S1 vertebrae. The second significant health problem was Mr. Tyler's own battle with mental health. He had been struggling with PTSS, which caused him to hit a very low point in his career, almost resulting in him taking his own life. Having symptoms of PTSD have been diagnostically shown to cause abnormalities in brain structure, as seen to the right. Part of these damages in patients with these disorders included decreased volume in brain structures in cerebral white matter. Uh, cerebral white matter is responsible for communication within the cerebral cortex and central nervous system centers. The hippocampus aids in memory and learning, and evidence show that there was also damage to the frontal portion of the limbic system in the brain. This part of the brain considered to be involved in 
our emotions visceral brain. A damage to parts of the brain responsible for emotion can cause the value of patient care to diminish, along with damage to the hippocampus, aiding in memory and learning. Mr. Tyler also mentioned to me that he has taken clonopin, which is a prescription medication primarily used to treat seizures that can be effective in treating anxiety or panic attacks as well, which is what he used it for. Uh, clonopin is a benzodiazepine, which are a little different than antidepressants because they alter chemical signals in the brain, which cause the panic attacks and anxiety. Um, in order to decrease cases of PTSD and PTSS, causing these brain abnormalities in humans exposed to stressful environments, it is important to recognize stressors and help others when they struggle. Um, as Mr. Tyler stated, it is always good to have avenues outside of EMS and firefighting because you must have something that will relieve your mind when it's needed because inevitably you will need it. As a provider working in EMS, you will always have some sort of exposure to an environment that may take a turn for the worse, but it is important to take certain measures to ensure the health and safety as a provider so that the best care possible can be given to your patients. These are my references um, that I used for this study. Um, the only one I want to really point out is the first one, which is kind of outdated, but I decided to use this instead because it really um, elaborated more on the brain abnormalities and PTSD and how those different structures are affected caused by this disorder. Um, although it's outdated, it still contained really valuable information that can still be used today. And of course, a big shout out to Dr. Field and Mr. JT Tyler for helping me with my um, study this semester. It, they've really stuck with me throughout it all. I also want to thank Amber McGinnis for um, guiding me along the process of creating this case study. And another shout out to Bridget Wood for helping me with my citations and making sure everything was accurate and correct.